Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 29. Today I want to um, try a couple things out. One thing I'm doing is I'm not recording live. I'm recording locally using my uh, webcam. Um, one of the things about recording live, especially if I use the Ustream producer, uh, is since it's streaming up to the Ustream website live, uh, it requires a lot of bandwidth, which I don't have. So consequently, I have to use a pretty low resolution in order to uh, be able to upload real time. But by not doing that and recording locally, I can record at high resolution. It's a trade-off because um, I don't have any software right now that will let me do the things that Ustream producer lets me do, such as uh, switch to my desktop so I can show you my desktop, um, bring in a recording that I did and merge it in, in the real-time stream of something that I recorded earlier. Um, so I, I lose those capabilities. But the big gain is I get higher resolution. So we're going to try this. Um, I'll have to merge my beginning uh, video, intro video, you want to call it, uh, and anything else I want to add uh, during the recording manually. I have to do that manually. It'll take an extra little time, but if it improves my video quality, that's the ultimate goal as far as I'm concerned because my video quality right now and my previous shows have not been that good. It's it's really it's really poor, to say the truth. It's really poor. So today, um, oh the other thing I found out, I got an email from YouTube, which is where I eventually put my uh, shows is on YouTube. It's a better place to uh, get better coverage and people uh, use it more often than they use Ustream. Uh, anyway, I got an email from them that says my limit of 15 minutes for a recording has been removed. And that is something I am really looking forward to because I had originally, when I first started, planned on doing shows that would last 30 minutes or more, but I ran to the restriction where if I wanted to put them on YouTube, it was limited to 15 minutes. So sometimes when I was discussing a particular topic, I kind of was just getting into it when I had to stop the recording so that I didn't exceed the 15 minutes. So theoretically, if uh, what they sent me is true, then that restriction has been removed. So anyway, today I wanted to go into, and this is a case where I wanted to go into it more when I did the uh, previous show on applications for hams and scanner enthusiasts uh, on the Android phone, but I ran out of time. So today I'm going to uh, take a couple of those applications and give you a little more detail. So, and we're going to see how well by doing this. Uh, as opposed to um, having a camera dedicated to point to my phone or using my desktop, which uh, works pretty well using the desktop and showing you, because I have a simulator for the, um, the Android phones that will run many, but not all of the applications on your PC. And I could have actually tried to do this with these applications I'm going to show you, but I think both of them um, require you to have access to the internet uh, to run properly and give you the data and stuff like that, so it wouldn't have worked on my PC simulator anyway. So we're going to see how well it shows up on the screen uh, using my webcam. So I'm going to turn my uh, phone on here and uh, let me go back and the first one I'm going to show you is um, 
APR, APRS viewer. And APRS is an automatic uh, packet reporting system that hams use and allows them to simply, on, to simplify it, it allows them to have their radio transmit information via packet radio uh, about their location. If they have a GPS um, receiver connected to their radio, they can they can provide real time information of where where they're at. Uh, they can also, which is what I like about it, is they can also can 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 provide. Uh, real-time or semi-real-time weather information if they have a weather station and they have a amateur radio and they're running packet they can provide uh, real-time weather information which this time of year is pretty interesting so you're getting specific information about the weather at a you know, one of the ham operators locations so it's very specific um, it's good couple reasons if you've got a ham uh, near you uh, that's running this system, you can see out see what his weather station is reporting or has reported overnight. Or if you're interested, like I'm interested in what's happening up where my daughter lives, which is um, up in Peoria, so I can I can find a packet weather station that's running this software and see what's going on up next to her real time. Uh, pretty uh, pretty close to real time, you know, and it's uh, you know it shows you uh, graphs of what's happened over the past 24 hours or whatever. Pretty interesting. And now, and you could do that. You could have done this for some time on your PC, but now you you can also do this on your phone. Um, so if you uh, you want to get information while you're on the go. Uh, and you don't have a radio, an amateur radio, that's capable of receiving this information uh, directly, and you can now do it on your phone. Or if you're like me, if you go visit uh, a relative or something and you get bored or everybody's gone somewhere, you can pull this out and play with that. So let me, uh, i got to restart my phone again. I talked so much it went off. Okay, let's go back to. Okay, now we're going to see if you can see this stuff. It's. Whoops, that wasn't cool. Waited too long. It's the, uh, the icon up here. And it's got a big WX, and then underneath it, it's called APRS Viewer. So if I click on that, first the thing it, it does is, is loads, loads the data. Excuse me, the latest map off the internet. Again, the phone, since you have internet access via the phone, the phone can do this. And then it shows you all the, uh, and this is weather information uh, via APRS. It shows you, oh boy, it's not going to show up too well. Yeah, there it does, kind of. I can get my left and right straight. So there's Pinellas County where I live. And the little blue dots, which say WX in them, but you can't read that, are the APRS weather stations in this area. As you can see, there's quite a few just within, um, this is like a 25 mile radius. So then you can uh, click on one of the, or yeah, click on one of those blue dots and uh, then, you can, then you get an option. Whoops. Yeah, you can't see it. You get two options. You can't see it on the screen. You get two options. One show path uh, to that station or uh, the path that station is take, taken if it's mobile. Or show weather data, which is what I'm interested in. So I want to show weather data. And what it does is it, it takes you to the internet and it takes you to the web page for that station and shows you the weather data for that station in the form of graphs. I don't know if you can see this graph or not. Yeah, there you go. If I get the, there's a graph, you can't tell what it says, but what it says is temperature. 
So that's a graph of the temperature over the past a uh, couple of days. This is a couple of days. Past five days, it says. And then also on here is the wind, which we're having quite a bit of wind now. You can see the wind's been picking up past 24, or this week, I should, past five days. Um, and then you can also select um, 12, last 12 hours, last day, last two days, and so on. And uh, and then there's also, if I can get this to, there's a radar map, real-time radar map. And you can see a weather, a, yeah, wind storm, a rain, rainstorm just went by, or is in the area. So that's a pretty neat application. Like I said, you could, you know, it's all real, pretty much real time, um, and it's done by individual hams. Amateur radio operators, like I said, they have a weather station. The weather station is connected to the radio, which then transmit over the airwaves this packet information, which if you have um, a radio that could pick up the, the text stream, you can see the text and see the conditions. Uh, or if you're on, like I say, on your computer or now on your phone, you can now get this information off of that. So anyway, that program is uh, called uh, APRS Viewer. It's a free application, and I think you'll like it if you're into weather especially. Okay, let's close that down. And there's a bunch of other options, but that's kind of the, the most fascinating options. Okay, the next one I want to show you is let me see if I can find it. I got a lot of applications on here. Two, 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 two. So one on beacons. Now beacons are radio stations that just just transmit um, uh, their call sign and the object is that it will give you an indication of reception, you know how well you can receive that station in that location uh, throughout the world, and by doing that, you can get some idea of how well your radio is working, how the weather conditions are as far as reception, and then um, if you're interested in receiving uh, either shortwave radio or any kind of broadcast in that area, you have an, you have an indication of whether um, it's feasible, and then they give you an indication of whether now you think you can try to pick up that station. Because otherwise, if you try to pick up a station and you can't get it, you don't know if there's something wrong with your radio, your antenna, the weather conditions, the stations off the air, or what. But by listening to the beacons, you can get an idea of, okay, I'm receiving something from that area, so therefore I should be receiving the station that I want to listen to if it's on the air. And the way, way the system works is that these stations put out um, their call signal and information at a certain time. In that way, by using a program like this, you know, okay, I should have received something at that particular time of the day because that beacon was transmitting at that time of the day and it was on a certain frequency. So what this, oh, I'm not losing you. what this program does, it provides you a nice map and you probably can't read it, but these are all the, shows all the stations throughout the world and uh, they're they're uh, identified by a red dot. It men, means they're transmitting at this time. So you should, if you can hear, if your station can pick them up, you should hear it. And they tra I don't, I can't remember how long they transmit. They they just transmit for a, a short period of time, and then they switch to another station. So all this is synchronized. I've seen. Um, I've seen uh, a clock you can buy, of all things, that has almost the same thing. It has a, a 
picture of the United States with all these stations and then the thing lights up when the beacon is supposed to be transmitted. And like I say, uh, these are fixed so the beacon always transmits at the same time uh, so it's a fixed time schedule. The other thing it shows you, it'll show you uh, whether the station is in service, whether it's still working or not. And then the last thing it shows you, it'll show you the station with a black dot that sh means that uh, at the present time the station is not in service. And you can see there's probably a couple of black dots on there, which means a couple of stations are not working anymore, they've gone off the air, uh, whatever. And you can select, there's a couple of frequencies that these beacon stations transmit on. And you can select which frequency uh, uh, you want to monitor on this map based on what frequency of the station you want to listen to is going to be on. So they've got 20 meters, 17 meters, and 15 meters. And so you select which one of those three that you want to monitor. So right now I've selected 20 meters which is 14.1 uh, megahertz and so this is the map and you can see that red blinking one that's the one it's transmitting right now and it also gives you uh, the local time in GMT time which right now let's say it says 1325 local and my watch says 1326 my watch is apparently a little bit off so that's uh, that's the second uh, program that I use um, again I really like this for giving me an indication of whether something uh, should be heard on a certain frequency or not and uh, that is called that program is called again these are two programs for the Android phones or the Android operating system really. And this one is called NCDXF Beacon. So that's a great little beacon program. But again, it's free um, and it's very well done and it apparently it works pretty well. So that's for the show for the day. And I've noticed according to my uh, webcam uh, recorder that I've gone over 15 minutes. So we will find out today if um, I'm going to upload this to YouTube. So like I say, it's 17 minutes. And I need to add the, uh, the lead-in uh, intro video. And it would definitely be over 15 minutes and we'll see if it gets accepted. And that will mean that now I can record over 15 minutes. So that's the show for today. Hopefully also by doing this uh, offline using my webcam instead of going through Ustream, uh, video will be a lot better. It's Right now it says it's recording in high definition, 720p. We'll see. I don't have to advantage or disadvantage looking at me, but we'll see. Okay, we'll give it a stop here.